Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan. Our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and that's a program of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So I'm really, really pleased to welcome our guest today, Ken Aramaki. Uh, Ken is the Director of Transmission and Distribution and Interconnection Planning for Hawaii Electric. Gosh, that sounds like a huge job, Ken. Today, we're going to talk a story about uh, renewable energy zones and uh, Hawaii Electric's community engagement plan for Oahu. Ken, welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Thanks. Hey, hey Mitch, thanks for having me. So let's get to know a little bit about you first as a person. So uh, where are you from or where'd you go to school and how long you've been at Hawaiian Electric? Okay, I was uh, born on Kauai, born and raised on Kauai. I um, went to high school. High school is the more important question, right? But I went to yeah, high school. Yeah, that's the important question for Hawaii, <laughs> for all you people on the mainland. It's more important than the college you went to. Yeah, I, I actually went to school in Oahu for high school. I went to mid um, Oh, cool. That's a great school. Hawaii. Yeah. Um, for college, I went to University of Portland. And then I have been working at Hawaii Electric basically my whole career. I had a little stint at... Um, uh, the DOD at NAPFAC, but for the most part of it, about uh, 12 plus years now at Hawaii Electric. And it yeah, makes so that's, that, that's a pretty big job you've got. I mean, imagine that head of T&D and, and, uh, and uh, distribution and interconnection planning. I mean, what kind of a staff do you have? Yeah, um, yeah so um, my area is made up of four departments. So I oversee uh, four managers as well as their staff, uh, and yeah, it, it is it is a lot. It's um, it's a major area. It's super exciting. It's uh, as probably as high tech as it can be uh, for the right. utility. Um, and you know, being um, at, in Hawaii, being at Hawaii Electric, we are leading everyone else um, across the nation in our pursuit of uh, renewables. Yeah, what you're accomplishing is fantastic. So uh, let's start off uh, on the next slide, uh, slide two. Let's let's talk about uh, climate change action planning. So tell us a little bit about it. it looks kind of complicated, but those letters are small. But you can tell us uh, what it all involves. I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. So uh, late last year, our company set out this ambitious goal, which is to cut emissions seventy uh, percent by 2030, um, and that's compared to 2015 levels. Uh, in order to do that. Um, really, this slide is to set the context of what we're talking about today. Um, right. For us to actually reduce carbon emissions, it's not just addressing one key initiative, it's actually many. Um, and so it kind of starts with uh, retiring our fossil fuel uh, generating units. Uh, as we start to retire those, uh, we also need replacement capacity to take the place of those. And replacement capacity comes in the form of large utility scale renewable resources, as well as uh, DERs or distributed energy resources um, like right. top solar um, batteries. Um, in addition to that, uh, we need, we do see basically a, a large, uh, a major uh, growth in electric usage over the next you know, 10, 15 plus years, uh, a lot due to electrific electrification of transportation. So, in order for us to meet these goals or achieve these targets in an effective manner, uh, we also need to promote energy efficiency uh, to you know, find ways to reduce uh, demands where it makes sense. Uh, and then uh, lastly, um, uh, developing programs that shift energy around so that we can uh, reduce or we can use uh, the most economical resources you know, you know, during, those, um, during the times that they should be used. So Oahu is going to be one of the hardest, it is not going to be, it is the hardest place to find renewable energy. I mean, my first job at HNEI like 20 years ago was to look at, well, what kind of renewable resources do we have throughout Hawaii? And uh, it became quickly apparent to me that Kauai, Maui, and the Big Island could be totally self-supporting, but that it was the real challenge was going to be on Oahu because of the large population and the small land area. So uh, I guess this is going to be a major challenge, I, I can say. And uh, of course, uh, people are very conscious about uh, systems in their backyard. So I'm going to be really interested to hear how that goes. 
So let's uh, flash up the next uh, slide three. And um, so this is like a, a renewable energy planning from 2027 to 2033. And so my, my question was, uh, first of all, you can tell us about that, but wh why the long lead in? What, why is it gonna take us five years to get to this plan? Or is that is that when the, well, just tell us about the plan. Okay. I was kind of, kind of curious about you know, why it was five years to ramp it up. Sure. Um, so uh, uh, first of all, this slide is what we call uh, our near-term plan. So what we, what uh, this is, uh, you know, the seven to 10 year time frame. Uh, this is what we call near-term. And that's because it takes a lot, a long time to develop these uh, resources. Uh, um, and actually what I get into for the renewable energy zones that goes beyond uh, these time frames as well. Um, what this slide shows is that, um, you know, if you look at each island, and I guess I won't go over each number, but we already have a lot of resources, both on utility scale renewable energy, as well as on DER, or the customer site resources. Uh, but we need to find ways to keep increasing that. And uh, in the near term, what we, what we plan to do, which is what, we call, we're, what we're calling stage three, uh, we, we did an RFP for stage one, stage two, um, and those projects are currently in progress and going in. Then the next one is stage three. Uh, and these stage one, two, and three, they basically use the infrastructure that we have today okay. and find ways to interconnect more resources to them. Uh, but we're going to reach a saturation point. We're going to reach a point where you can't just merely and it's not already plug and play, but you can't merely plug and play uh, utility scale resources to our current system. So we're gonna have to find ways to increase it even more to get to that you know, 90, 100% um, targets. And that's where renewable energy zones come into play. Right. So uh, let's uh, move on to uh, slide four. And uh, let's talk about integrated uh, grid planning. So how important is the community engagement component and how are you going to reach out to them? But tell us, first of all, what is integrated grid planning? I mean, people hear it, you know, all the time. It's kind of like a buzzword. So what does it actually mean? Yeah, um, so Hawaiian Electric has been working on this integrated grid planning process uh, for a few years now. Um, this is essentially the first of its kind. Um, we are a vertically integrated utility, so we have the ability to do this integrated grid planning process. Um, it takes the place of the traditional integrated resource planning process, which we essentially looked at um, uh, find optimizing generating resource mixes on the, uh, on the, uh, on the system. Uh, the integrated grid planning process looks at the generation, the transmission and distribution uh, resources, finds the optimal portfolio, and then um, develops this, uh, finds ways to go out and procure those resources, um, as well as um, go and develop those resources. So uh, it, uh, to do this process, it's generally four major steps. I mean, there's many subtasks to this uh, process, but essentially it starts with data collection that's gathering information, that's uh, using assumptions, determining what the methods are gonna be for the technical analyses, uh, then it goes into plan definition, which is developing the, the that plan. And um, we, so we take uh, what the inputs and assumptions are, the methodologies, we do an analysis, uh, we figure out uh, you know what the best or optimal resource mix is. We develop what the supporting uh, transmission distribution resources are, and all of this is to essentially get to these high renewable energy um, uh, portfolios. Uh, and uh, this plan definition, this is where the renewable energy zones uh, planning process comes into play. Um, and that bar on the bottom, uh, essentially along the way we've been doing, and we're gonna continue to uh, engage with the community. Um, we, have, we engage with key stakeholders within the integrated grid planning process, but we also go out to the communities uh, to help educate, to help um, understand uh, what their needs are. Um, so that we can integrate all that into the integrated grid planning process. 
So you, you're doing this not just for Oahu, though. But you're also doing this in parallel on the Big Island and on Maui, is my understanding, correct? Correct, as well as um, Lanai and, and oh. some East, yeah, Maui. Yeah. Right, right, right. So that's a huge job. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of contractors helping you out doing... Uh, are you doing all the modeling in-house? I mean, I think HEI is doing a little bit of it for you. Uh, yeah, a lot of the mod modeling is done in-house. Um, uh, we do, you know, supplement with consultants. Um, I mean, off top, we're getting off topic, but you know, what we what we do find is Hawaii is so far ahead in advancing these types of analyses that it's actually really hard to find consultants that can help fulfill uh, these roles. Um, so yeah, that, that's why it, it's also been very interesting. Well, that's the good news and the bad news, but it's great to hear that we're so far ahead that it's hard to find other people who know how to do it. <laughs> well, let's go on to the next slide and we're gonna now talk about renewable energy zones. So, um, so what are the opportunities and uh, what are the barriers? First of all, what are they? And then what are the opportunities, what are the barriers? Sure. Um, essentially, uh, as I explained before, and I'm not going to go through each of these bullets, but um, when we did our renewable uh, RFPs, um, which is right. what we call stage one, two, and three, we're using the resources that we already have on the system. Uh, going forward um, in, in a, in a, on a longer term basis, we need to start planning for what the transmission infrastructure is going to be in order to support these larger tranches of renewable energy resources. Um, so um, why we did this uh, initially under the integrated grid planning process, that was to come up with um, proxy costs um, so that we can better understand what the supporting transmission is to get um, renewable resources in certain areas. Um, and ultimately what, what we're gonna continue to do is engage with the community. We're gonna engage with the key stakeholders to refine this plan and um, try to identify what locations are best suited for renewable energy development and um, where it's more realistic to um, pursue those uh, developments. And then we're gonna need to start planning for the transmission infrastructure required to um, support those. So let's move on to the next slide. And I think you've kind of covered that in uh, this previous uh, conversation we just had, but is there anything we missed there that we need to talk about? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the only thing that I wanted to uh, mention was that um, while the study, uh, the study basis is on solar and wind potential, uh, the analysis that we've been doing is technology agnostic. So it, it looks at basically, uh, we, we do uh, power flow analyses, and that's basically looking at how many megawatts can be pushed out into the system from various locations. So really it's, it could be it could be solar, it could be wind, it could be um, biodiesel, it could be um, hydro even, it could be any type of resource pushing out megawatts in certain areas of the system. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. A So let's let's talk about Oahu now. Let's zero okay. in on Oahu. Uh, next slide is uh, slide seven. So why don't you describe uh, where we have these renewable energy zones here on Oahu and uh, give everybody kind of a, a, a preview of what you're looking at. Okay, um, so let me take a step back. Um, the renewable energy zones where we are today is, we're looking at it from a technical aspect first, and then that's when we go out to the community. So in terms of the technical aspect and this initial, um, initial kind of draft of the study, uh, this is looking at where this potential exists and what it takes to interconnect that entire or a large part of that potential to the system. Um, so we're kind of aiming high and then we know that we're going to have to try to address, you know, which areas are best suited, which areas we need to avoid. Um, and that's the type of input that we look forward to in, uh, with the community. So for Oahu, um, I mean, really, it covers much of the um, island. Um, in in the past, a, a lot of development, renewable development, has been you know east um, and north sides of the island, uh, and some in the central. Um, and based on this map, it's almost everywhere. 
um, the areas that don't really have, uh, you know, solar or wind potential is kind of that um, Honolulu area, essentially. Um, and that's because it's currently covered by buildings and homes. Um, but um, yeah, so th this just looks at where, you know, these large areas that have lots of land availability and are well suited for um, solar or wind development. So let's look at, uh, I think the next one up is Maui. So why don't you give us a little overview of the zones on Maui? Okay, so um, in, in our initial study, uh, which by the way, it, it is available online. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, our initial study, we, we looked at, and as you said, development on Maui, Hawaii Island, um, and Ko and Ko I'm not sure about Kauai, even though I'm from Kauai, but um, yeah. the other islands besides Oahu, there's much more land available to develop right. uh, you know, uh, uh, renewable resources. And so on Maui, um, basically all the green are areas that were indicated um, based on a, in a study done by the national labs as potential areas that could be um, developed for solar or wind. There's so much availability that we wouldn't, for Maui and Hawaii Island, we wouldn't be trying to get every square inch or square mile of all those in order to meet um, the demand of the island. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so basically prioritize looking at you know, where our infrastructure currently is, which is, it's kind of the, 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 the strongest, the strongest uh, technically um, transmission infrastructure on the island is in, kind of in the central, uh, sort of going westward um, areas on Maui. And so that's why we looked at um, uh, uh, these options or alternatives of placing uh, potential zones in the central, uh, central sort of uh, southern areas and going west. Okay, so how about the Big Island? Let's look at the next slide, the Big Island slide. Yeah, uh, Hawaii Island, similar, uh, lots of potential. Um, this one, we also looked at two different options. Um, and, and again, these aren't actual like plan options. These are kind of technical options that are initially for discussion purposes. Um, and we do plan to provide these maps to, uh, oh, it's already available, but you know, it's not like the community is actually actively looking into our um, filings and, and <laughs> submittals. But right. as we go out to the, the community, you know, we're gonna have these available. We're gonna have these, um, uh, we're going to ask for their feedback on these um, and try to better optimize where um, the resources should be. So let's go to the last slide where we have a, yeah, the community engagement slide. So um, how are you going to reach out to them? Are you going to go to like the local community boards or I mean, how how are you going to get the people engaged in this? I mean, it's good to say, yeah, we're going to have this plan. But how do you attract them, bring them in, um, and then manage the uh, information that you get out of it? Yeah, so um, over the next few months, we are starting to plan um, workshops and meetings, um, both hybrid, in person, and online um, types of meetings uh, on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii Island. Um, right. So, yeah, we, we are going to have these available for the community to attend. Um, we're also going to, we're working on a web-based application where basically the zones would be shown and folks could add their um, input on, you know, on a, a website if they aren't able to make these community meetings. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's our plan. Uh, for, for the next uh, few months, uh, my schedule is full of uh, meeting meetings. So. So what, what kind of, yeah, what kind of feedback are you looking for, though? What, what do you want to hear from them? I mean, part of it is, oh, um, yeah, this is very interesting, but are you also looking for their recommendations as well? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, what we want to see is, um, you know, the, the community knows the best, right? So um, as we go out to these areas, um, uh, we want to understand, you know, what, what, what areas within that area you know, does it make sense to add large scale renewable resources? Uh, what areas should we be avoiding um, if we are planning for resources in the area? Um, and uh, what other considerations should we be uh, 
uh, taking into account as we iterate on this planning process. Um, and essentially what we wanna do is get more input on how to better size or locate these um, renewable energy zones so that we can then find the supporting transmission requirements to support these areas. So uh, <clears throat> what, what, what has been the initial uh, reaction? Has there been a, has, from the people that are aware of this program? What, what's been the uh, reaction from the, from the local community so far? Or is it too early to say? Yeah, um, we, we've been, we, we've had elements of this um, discussed with the community and other um, you know, RFP type of uh, community engagements. Um, we've engaged with uh, key stakeholders. Um, uh, we have key stakeholders within our um, integrated grid planning process. Uh, and I also recently did a webinar with the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Right. I, think, I think in general, uh, people, uh, people know, like people generally agree that this is the right thing to do or you know, that we, we need to do this, um, especially if we're gonna meet our, our state goals. Um, I mean, I think, I think there's just like, um, people are, just wanna know what the next step is. I think uh, we're currently at like this initial level, trying to identify, understand uh, what the high level requirements or consideration should be. So I think as this plan keeps on morphing and uh, keeps uh, incorporating more input then people will have more input. So do you have a feel for when you, you're gonna start holding these uh, community meetings? I mean, I, I, I think you said, two, is it two or three months? Is that so like early in the, in 2023? Uh, no, um, we are planning then in uh, October and November. Oh, okay. And it, it'll probably spill into maybe December, January timeframe as well. So how do you get a dialogue going? I mean, it's, it's good to go out and give a pitch and then they give suggestions, but then how do you um, how do you respond to the suggestions? Do you have to go back out again and uh, for several iterations till you zero in on something uh, on a uh, what kind of consensus of the community and a feeling for them? Yeah, I think well, I think what we plan to do is get this initial uh, reaction, re initial feedback from them, um, and see and go from there. <laughs> Um, we we want to see what you know. It's probably going to be dependent on each community. You know, what what they feel is, um, you know, right for their community. What things right. we should be considering for their areas, and then um, yeah, if, I mean, if we need to go back and uh, get more clarification, uh, then yeah, I mean, we'll we'll try to pursue that. So we're coming to the end of our time, believe it or not. So um, are there any uh, messages that you have an opportunity? So you've got the podium right now. Is there anything that you want to say uh, out there about the, the overall program and, and what your expectations are before we uh, wind it down? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think you know, the, the state as a whole, we're all, we're, we're all on board on this uh, renewable energy. Uh, progress and um, in order for us to get there we're gonna have to be we're gonna have to do things differently uh, we can't just use what we have today we, we're gonna have to plan for that future that you know um, that 15 plus year future uh, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look at these uh, types of uh, resources and um, transmission infrastructure so um, yeah I guess that's it I mean, that, you know we, okay. we, we're, we're planning for the future. We have that in sight. We have that vision. And um, this is how we're going to go about it. So let's uh, throw up the last slide, slide 11. This tells us how to get in contact with your uh, reading a little bit uh, small there. Uh, Ken, why don't you just tell people where they can go? Yep. So um, to get more information on the integrated grid planning process, uh, you can go to hawaiianelectric.com slash clean energy. Um, and uh, there should be links to the integrated grid planning process. Alternatively, the shortcut is hiko.com slash IGP. Um, and then you can also email me ken.aramaki at hawaiianelectric.com. Hey, great. So um, HEPF, we'll put this up on our own website, uh, your slide deck, so people can have uh, access to that as well. Um, and uh, so Ken, uh, I think we're gonna have to leave it there.
Thank you so much. So we've been uh, watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on FinTech Hawaii. And we've been talking the story with Ken um, Aramaki of Hawaiian Electric, who's got a huge job uh, putting all this together, energy zones and uh, transmission and distribution and planning uh, so that we can um, become uh, a clean energy state. So thanks for participating, Ken. I know uh, you worked late last night getting a slide deck together. Thank you. No, thank you for having me, Mitch. Okay, and thanks to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Mitch Yuan. Uh, we'll be back in about two weeks uh, with another thrilling uh, uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, our show on Think Tech Hawaii. So uh, aloha, everyone. See you in two weeks. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.